successful when tested against the Ionian enemies and Illyrian enemies. The King Philip, like I said, he died before he was able to put his plan into action, conquering the entire Mediterranean. But his son Alexander, Alexander, later known as Alexander the Great, was able to expand Macedonia until the Indian borders. Well, his son, so the king, the Philip's son Alexander, was started to leading the Federation of Greek States, accomplished his father's objectives of commanding the whole Greece. As a punishment, he destroyed Thebes, the city of Thebes, after the city revolted. After that, Alexander started to expand its empire, conquering, conquering the regions from Asia Minor. Minor Asia, and the first battle he encountered here was uh, at the Carnicus. Carnicus, yeah, Carnicus was the first battle when he encountered the Persian king Darius the Third. But he didn't encounter the king itself. He just encountered. A small army of the Persians, because the Persians were unaware of the abilities or tactical abilities of Alexander, and they sent only a small number of military troops in order to counter to counter the Alexander's army. The Persians did not understand exceptional talent had moved a very small force. Alexander arrived at the banks of Granicus River late in the day, late in the day, to find the Persian forces camped on the other side. He decided to attack, to took this advantage of that fact of surprise with his assault, leaving them in minimal time to bring up their infantry behind. The left wing of the Macedonian army, led by Alexander, kicked off the attack, taking heavy casualties on the riverbed. However, they successfully drew the attention of the Persians and turned their line slightly in that direction. After holding back, Alexander led his companion cavalry in attack on the right flank on the other opposite, taking the enemy by surprise. The fighting was fierce, and Alexander and the closest soldiers crested the river bank, and the legends say that Alexander was almost killed in the moments that followed. Still, when the remainder of the cavalry had made it across the battle, was essentially won due to its very genius, genial tactics, forcing the Persian remaining troops to retreat. And after this, he just started to continue through the in the south. Through the Aegean. Through the Aegean coast in the south. And here it's how the lines here are uh, representing the ways that 
next battle was at Isos. Isos. Here, at the Battle of the Isos, was a direct encounter between Alexander and Darius. Between Alexander and Darius. And Darius. Both commanding the armies in full skill battle against one another. army greatly outnumbered the Macedonians. The battlefield was bordered one side by the gulf, by the gulf of Isos. Yeah, by the gulf of Isos. And on the other by the roof terrain of the Amanus mountains, limiting the number of soldiers of Persian army could send into battle at one time. Almost neutralizing or cancelling their attacks. Well, in this way, the mastermind of Alexander proved, in tactics proved against, Alexander took full advantage of his well chosen ground and his tactical knowledge, fully aware that the numbers were on the Persian sides. He employed the same strategy that later use at Caguamela. Get to the King Darius, killing, capturing or forcing the Persian king to flee. The field would present, present him with victory. Here it's the first time when Darius, the king of Persians, fleet the battlefield.
same way. He returned on the same way. And he had, he had to the deep inside to the Asian territory or Asian region. And here it's one of the greatest battles he took and he won. It's the battle of Guacamela. Guacamela, Guacamela. Well, he was the battle of Gaugamela was a major success for Alexander. His stellar use of tactics again was lean. Superior numbers ended in a decisive Macedonian victory. At that point Alexander had 47,000 troops or soldiers and he faced Darius army who had 250,000 soldiers. So Alexander entered the battle with 47,000 against 250,000 and he won one of the greatest battles in the history. And Alexander knew his army could not stand up shear the numbers of foes for very long. He realized that his only option for victory was to quickly capture or kill the Persian king Darius, who was stationed near the center of the Persian lines, surrounded by his elite soldiers. Alexander's best general, Paramenion, was charged with holding the defensive position. And the tactics accomplished because Alexander took command of the right wing with infantrymen concealed among his cavalry. He ran to the right, forcing the Persian flank to make a decision to follow him. When he had drawn the Persian cavalry out, his men attack, surprising them with the hidden infantry from the hills. The tactic accomplished Alexander's goal, pulling the Persian left and creating a gap between the lines. And then he strike between the lines, splitting in half the Persian army, forcing them again to retreat. Afghanistan securing the reach of 
subcordia process, which is right here. All right. Then he returned to Babylon. The Babylon, the city which was impressed and he stayed a few a few months there. During that time in Babylon, when his Macedonian troops threatened mutiny, mutiny in 324 at here yeah, in Opis Babylonia, Alexander offered Macedonian military titles and greater responsibility to Persian officers and units, forcing his troops to seek forgiveness at the stage banquet of reconciliation, reconciliation between Persians and Macedonians. Okay, and here we have the Battle of Bucheval or the city of Bucheval. No? Well, Bucheval was or Bucheval, Alexandria is a city in the Punjab founded by Alexander the Great and named in honor of his horse Bucephalus Bucephalus and here we have the battle of Hidaspes it's the first encounter of Alexander against Porus the king Porus the battle of Hidaspes also known as the Battle of Jellum or First Battle of Jellum, was fought between Alexander the Great and Porus in May, in May 326 BC. It took place on the banks of the Hydaspes River in Punjab region, Punjab, as part of Indians of Alexander's Indian campaign. The Macedonian army secured a decisive, decisive victory over the, the Porus and captured him. After that, large areas of Punjab were subsequently absorbed into the Macedonian Empire. But uh, uh, Alexander was proven to be very mercy with Porus and he respected so much Porus that he reinstalled him as a regent's ruler after he defeated him. In spite of close Indian surveillance, Alexander's decision to cross the months of swollen heights passes in order to catch Boris' army in the flank has been referred as one of the masterpieces in combat. The Macedonians' engagement with the Indians at Haidas Pass. Haidas Pass remains a very significant historical event. Here we have another A from another Alexandria city in the Indus. And here we have on the Indian campaign, we have the Malian campaign or the siege of Malia. Macedonians 
engaged several skirmishes and battles with the tribe known as the Malians, Malians. and their clash culminated in a siege on the Malian stronghold. By the time they assaulted the towns, Alexander soldiers were exhausted and ready to head home. When ordered to place ladders and climb the walls, they hesitated to encourage them forward. Alexander leaped in the front and began scaling the ladders himself. Emerging on the walls alone and exposed to the enemy arrows, realizing his precarious position, Alexander quickly decided that his best course of action was simply to leap down into the city. Seeing their beloved king jump alone into the enemy citadel, Macedonian army panicked, panicked and began climbing themselves early the ladders. Unfortunately, in their fearful alarm, they overloaded the ladders and broke them. There, three or four men managed to reach the walls before the ladders broke and jumped down on the other side into the citadel just in time to see Alexander, who had been fiercely fighting of the enemy with his back to a large tree trunk fall. And he was shot with an arrow in the chest that nicked his lung. So it was um, heavily wounded in that battle, Alexander. The soldiers surrounded their king and fended off his attackers, each one slowly falling, killed or wounded. However, they managed to protect Alexander long enough that the army, now friends had with worry over his state, managed to clove their way into the city. Amazingly, with the penetrated lung, by the arrow, Alexander managed to survive the wound and continue his journey back to Babylon. He returned back to Babylon on this way. In this way. With his loyal and very relieved soldiers. Well, that was an act of madness by Alexander was echo, a uh, no echo, he was wanted to control and conquer the entire world as we know it today. And he returned again to Babylon. That was in three hundred Philip 
as a new king of the empire, and Perdiccas as his regent, but unfortunately with no official here apparent, apparent the Macedonian military command split in two. One side proclaiming Alexander's half-brother Philip III as the new ruler, as king and the other siding with the infant son of Alexander and Roxana, which was Alexander IV.
facts, whispering facts video. And until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye bye. Stay